Hi, everyone. Welcome to the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog, brought to you by Gate City Bank with Jeff Kolpak. I'm Dom Izzo, North Dakota State, into the FCS quarterfinals for a 13th consecutive season. The Bison, though for the first time, will play on a Friday night in the quarterfinal round. As Samford of Birmingham, Alabama, the SOCON Conference, will come here for Friday Night Lights in just a few days. Jeffrey, the Bison are starting to get a couple guys back. I know there's some lingering questions, A, on Hunter Lipke. We've not seen him since the Southern Illinois game. Matt Edson has given you a definitive well, it's, out. it's what we speculated, but yeah. now he's officially done. He had a, another opinion from another doctor from somewhere in the country and didn't come out as well as hoped, and I believe he'll be having surgery and faces apparently an extensive uh, recovery time, too. Not going to play in the Senior Bowl, which is wow. unfortunate for him. That's And that's the question now if you're Hunter Lipke. What do you do if you can't do that, if you can't maybe do, do the combine, combine? Do you – consider coming back here so you're able to do all of that stuff next well season. again that'll be the million dollar yeah. question moving forward noah gindorf took the same yep. path although he didn't make it back this year he could do that again he, theoretically he gindorf could do that <laughs> yeah. again if he wanted to for 2023 that's the and it's not a million dollar question that's a millions dollar question true. for lipke here at colback yeah, true and he is such a he's such a good prospect yeah. and he's uh, got a lot of um maybe there's enough film on on him for pro guys to say okay yeah. maybe uh we'll, we'll take a look and, and draft you or do you have to come back do you have to go to the combine do you have to do these all-star games well christian watson is example 1a of what he's doing in the nfl of why going to the senior bowl in the combine right. it was worth multi-million dollars i would, I would think you do i would think you you need to go to those those uh yeah. i mean they're spending millions of dollars on players they, they, they don't want to throw stuff right. at a dartboard that's a question for 2023 that we'll see if we can yeah. get answered. But for this 2022 team, they will go without number 44. Now, I've been asking, you've been asking about the home run hitter. Maybe it was right in front of our face because Kobe Johnson did it again on Saturday, the tune of two more over 60-yard touchdown runs. Yeah, I've heard Matt Entz on a couple of occasions in the last couple of days talk about his 10.6-second yeah. speed <laughs> and the 100, yard, 100 meters coming out of high school. And I think we're, we're, we're seeing yeah. that. We saw it against Montana State last year. People he's not that. like he's not shown yeah. it. But he's been there's such an emphasis on running backs on getting yards after contact. But and then when you do see him pull away yeah. from secondaries, you go, oh, yeah, that was very Bruce Anderson. I mean, you just forget that touchdown run you just alluded to in the national championship game because Lipke had three touchdowns. But yeah. that was the hammer that put the game away when Kobe did that last year in Frisco. Yeah, and Tamaric Williams show, has shown yeah. his speed on occasion, and, yep. and he did again last Saturday against Montana when he broke away. Uh, so here comes Samford, which is a team that has given up some rushing yards. And I'm <laughs> some. guessing we'll see more of the same. They from have the given up quite a bit of rushing yards. We don't know who the quarterback will be for the Bulldogs come Saturday. Michael Hires, who finished fourth in the Walter Payton mm -hmm. Award voting. So just out of the top three, they get invited to Frisco. Was injured against Mercer, played at just a couple of snaps. They're Crittenden, the backup, comes in and leads them to the win against uh, Southeast Louisiana. I have to imagine maybe we see both. On, on Friday night, well, we don't know the turnaround. We don't know the extent of the injury right. with hires, right? I, I, I don't. I no. didn't see anything uh, out there on in social media world. Uh, Critton is a freshman. I mean, yeah. this guy is, is pretty new to college football. And the head coach today opened his press conference with a little plea <laughs> to Bison fans to make it tough on the opposition. They they play fast. Yeah, they try to they they average they over eighty -tempo. plays a game. Uh, they want to get to the line of scrimmage as quickly as possible. And the one thing that could hurt you in doing that in Colin plays at the line of scrimmage uh, is if you can't hear. It's a loud Fargo Dome, which I anticipate, I think you're in agreement, this game being on Friday elevates, I think, the chance for more people than a Saturday 11 a.m. game. Seems like it. Leaves yeah. your weekend open. I would think so. Yeah, and, 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 you know, it's a Friday thing. Yeah. You knock off work yeah, early. I, and I would think there might go be to more, dinner yeah, and go to the game. people at the football game uh, come Friday night. A couple injury, injury notes on the Bison that actually are positive. Spencer Wagey looks like he's good to go after, we'll call it, the dirty hit that happened against Montana. Also a surprise that Logan Hofstad looks like he's going to be good to go. He had his left arm in a sling, but according to what Matt ends when I asked him about it, that he's going to be okay for Man, him. when he got hurt, he was rolling. He looked, yeah, he in looked like in big pain when, when he was on the field. So uh, good to see him back and really helps, the with especially with Hunter Lipke out. Yes. You can't lose any more fullbacks. No. And Hostin has proven to be so valuable yeah. in the passing game that, that Cam Miller has found him, that he's been a pretty athletic you know, kid you, for a size. Right, yeah. you take away the, the, the crazy play they had against UND. He's been reliable, though, to pick up some first downs. And now there's always is, is this caveat out there. Is Eli Mostart 
how how you know is yeah, he is he close? Right. He's running, and we know that. And, and he, he yeah. said he was he was tired from running. Well, which, by the way, Cole Wisniewski said the same thing to Ents mm. right before he came back and played. But yeah, so I don't know. If, I think you got to give it a shot if you're if you're healthy enough to go. Right? How long do you how you wait yeah. out here? You right. only have a couple games left potentially, so it's either. I'm not going to say now or never, but we're getting closer to, to either now or never, one or the other, correct? Uh, uh, correct, yeah. correct. Although you do have those three weeks between the, the, the semi <laughs> and the title game. but Boy, that'd be a heck of a thing if you're going to come back. We haven't seen that since the yeah. likes of Carson Wentz did that uh, in the national championship game in January of 2016. You look at the other games here. We talked about it this morning on Hot Mike. All the home teams won. And again, it looks like decided advantage Sacramento State gets Incarnate Word in their building. And, of course, the Jackrabbits get Holy Cross. I'm intrigued by that other game Friday night. William and Mary going across the country to play at Montana State, though it's going to be brutally cold. Oh. You would imagine in Bozeman at 8 o'clock at night. The William and Mary, a, a good ground game, yep. a good, good running attack, so that gives them some hope there. But I like the way Montana, Montana State is winning this year. You know, some of the games haven't been a little unconventional, yep. <laughs> but uh, but the, but they're winning, yep. and, and good teams do that. They find a way. I think that that game between Incarnate Word and Sacramento State, Bison fans I know are going to stay up if NDSU wins Friday because obviously either the Bison are getting another home game or they're going to Sacramento. The Hornets have lived a charm life this entire season. It, can it continue against a UIW team yeah. that can score at will, it looks like, this year? Well, it looks like they can. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. But I like the way Sac State has a more – focused attack on their ground game. I think their fullback Scatterbro is yeah, really, good, really good, and he's, he's a load to bring down. I would imagine that Sac State will try to slow the game down, much like NDSU yeah. will try to slow the game down against uh, – Against Samford. This is a third different SOCON team they've played. I don't know if there's any comparisons to what we saw with East Tennessee State. There's certainly no comparisons with Wofford, but this is the new mm. SOCON. You know what I mean? Like when it was when it was Georgia Southern in that league, when Wofford, we knew exactly. This is the new look, I think, of what the SOCON yeah, is. Yeah, not, not so much triple option based no. like it used to be. No. Citadel probably still Citadel, runs, yeah, a, absolutely. Still runs yep. a triple option, but without Georgia Southern – you know, leaving, and I, I feel like these teams have gone more multiple in recent years. And this uh, Sanford team is alluded to that Matt N said their only loss, Colpac, was to Georgia. And, I mean, it was 33 nothing, but it was 30 rip at halftime. The Bulldogs played it. I don't, I don't know what Georgia did. I did not watch that game in the second half, but Sanford played it pretty close in the second half. Yeah, so you did, they didn't get blown out no. against the best team in the FPS yeah. right now. So, uh, obviously, they, pro they held up okay physically, yeah. and that, that'll be the question now on, on, on Friday night is – how is the physical matchup yep. going to go? Going to be a big week. Colpack, Biggie, and Mike McFeely have stories all week long at Inforum.com. We'll, of course, have you covered on WDAY. Our pregame show is a 3 o'clock start time. We're live on WDAY at 3. Don't forget. 3. 3 o'clock on got Friday it. with the kickoff at 6 on ESPN2. you remind on me on Friday? Two. I'll remind you. I'll send you a text when you got to be there. 6 o'clock on ESPN2 for NDSU and Sanford. For Jeff Colpack, I'm Dom Izzo. That's the Bison Video Blog brought to you by Gate City Bank.